Shah Waliullah of Delhi, born in 1703 and died in 1762. As the signs of Islamic political, economic and intellectual decline became all too clear for everyone, during the early years of the 18th century, the once great dynastic powers like the Ottoman, the Safavid and the Mughal faced challenges at home and external threats from foreign powers. Their failure to address the mounting political, economic and intellectual crisis which confronted them at the same time undermined their political authority at home and made them increasingly vulnerable to the ambitious European colonial powers. Caught between a rock and a hard place, the Muslim rulers of the time struggled to maintain their grip on power. Amidst the prevailing chaos and confusion, however, there emerged a number of remarkable Muslim scholars and reformers who dedicated their lives to the revival of authentic Islamic teachings and practices and fought valiantly to rejuvenate Islamic culture and society. Though these scholars and reformers were not in a position to organise large armies and instigate military action against the encroaching foreign powers, they nevertheless managed to defend and champion Islamic values and principles at a critical point in Muslim history. One such remarkable intellectual and reformer was Shawulullah, who emerged to champion Islamic thought, culture and practices at a time when Muslim India was passing through one of the most difficult periods in its history. Qutbaldin Ahmad ibn Abdul Rahim, better known as Shah Waliullah of Delhi, was born in the Indian district of Muzaffarnagar into a prominent Muslim family of religious scholars and Sufi luminaries. His father, Shah Abdul Rahim, was a notable Islamic scholar, an exponent of Sufism, who traced his ancestry back to the Prophet through one of his grandsons, and also considered famous Indian Sufis such as Sheikh Ahmad al Sirhindi, Khwaja Baki Billah, and Abdul Haq Muhaddith al Dilahwi to be his spiritual progenitors. As a respected scholar of Islamic sciences, especially that of the Hanafi jurisprudence, Shah Abdul Rahim helped to compile the Fatawa al Alamgiri, the religious edict of Alamgir, the famous compendium of the Hanafi jurisprudence at the request of the great Mughal emperor Aurangzeb Alamgir. While respected for their family service to Islam and unflinching support for the Mughals, Shah Abdul Rahim's father, Shah Waji al Din Ghazi, had served as a commander in the Mughal army and was awarded the title of Ghazi or warrior by the Emperor Aurangzeb on the account of his exceptional bravery and loyalty. Shah Waliullah spent his early years in Muzaffarnagar and then moved to Delhi with his father where the latter had established the Madrasa al Rahimiyah a religious seminary which he taught Islamic sciences. Shah Waliullah therefore grew up in Delhi under the care of his father and committed the entire Quran to memory by the age of seven. He then studied Arabic, Persian and traditional Islamic sciences including Tafsir, the Quranic exegesis, Hadith, the prophetic traditions, Fiqh, jurisprudence of Mantik, logic, at the madrasa e rahimiya after completing his undergraduate studies at 15, he married, but unfortunately, his wife died a few years later. During this period, his father introduced him to Sufism and received initiation into the Chishtitiya, Naqshbandiya and Qadariya orders before resuming his higher education in Islamic sciences. In 1719, when Shah Waliullah was only 16, his father died. And suddenly the full operational responsibility of the Madrasa Rahimiyah fell on his shoulders. However, he proved to be a competent young man who not only managed the administrative affairs of the seminary but also started teaching there. For the next decade he remained preoccupied with the administration of the seminary and in his spare time he pursued advanced studies and research into the Islamic sciences, philosophy, mysticism, logic, history, aspects of traditional medicine and mathematics. During this period, he read widely and expanded his intellectual horizons so that he could think 
in a multidisciplinary way. Convinced that he had attained intellectual maturity, he then went to Mecca to perform the sacred pilgrimage. He was only 28 at the time. After completing the Hajj, he stayed in Mecca and Medina for over a year and engaged in further studies and research in the Islamic sciences, especially in Hadith and Fiqh under the tutelage of such prominent scholars as Abdul Tahir Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al-Khurdi and Muhammad Wat Allah al-Maghribi, who taught him Hadith and aspects of Fiqh. Shah Waliullah then received initiation in the Shadliya Sufi order, which was widely followed in Egypt and other Arab countries at the time. He closely observed the social, political, economic and spiritual conditions of the Muslims in Arabia. Though he did not meet his contemporaries, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, the famous Arabian Islamic reformer, his stay in Arabia enriched his knowledge of Islam and enabled him to experience and analyse the conditions of Muslims in the heartland of Islam at first hand. A perceptive thinker and gifted intellectual, Shah Walulah preferred to analyse and evaluate issues, whether they were religious or otherwise, in a systematic and multidisciplinary way. He was also in the habit of relating things to their contingencies, rather than analysing things in isolation from the wider picture. What he saw during his sojourn in Arabia confirmed his suspicions that the problems which confronted the Muslims in India were not unique. The Muslims of Arabia, as well as other Islamic nations, also suffered from the same predicament, namely the Muslim preoccupation and obsession with a form of Islam at the expense of its substance. He felt the failure of the Muslim scholars and intellectuals to address the new challenges which confronted Islamic societies, both theoretically and practically helped to create this sorry state of affairs. Convinced that the problem which Muslims faced at the time could not be addressed without reformulating Islamic thought into a systematic and holistic way, focusing on both the material and spiritual spheres of life, Shah Walula hoped to develop a fresh and integrated understanding of Islamic traditions in the light of his existential conditions. Not surprisingly, on his return to India he witnessed the same socio-political commotion that he had seen in Arabia. Indeed, after his death of Aurangzeb, the last of the great Mughal rulers in 1707, the Mughal dynasty began to decline rapidly as a result of incessant political rivalry and infighting within the royal family. The decline of the Mughal power and the authority encouraged many dissident groups like the Maratha, the Rajput, the Jat and the Sikhs to become active and carry out political subservient activities in order to overthrow the Mughals. As one Mughal ruler after another tried but failed to reassert their authority across the empire, their grip on India became increasingly precarious. Though Shaulullah was not a royalist in spirit, he nevertheless had no desire to see the Mughal rulers in India come to an end not least because the Mughals were Muslims and his own ancestors had once served the Mughals with great distinction. But as a talented scholar and thinker, he could clearly see what others failed to perceive, namely that the Mughal dynasty was now in deep trouble. There was very little he could do to stop the rot, others than directly engage with the masses and encourage them to partake in educational, social and religious activities across the country and despite the political uncertainties and social upheaval of the time, he inspired the Muslims to renew their faith and strengthen their commitment to Islam by leading an Islamic lifestyle. As an intellectual rather than a politician, Shah Walulah devoted the next three decades of his life to writing and researching on all aspects of Islam, and in doing so, he developed a powerful and compelling Islamic intellectual response to the challenges of his time. He lived at a time of profound political and social, economic, cultural and intellectual crisis in Mughal India, when the encroaching Europeans began to exert influence on the affairs of the nation, while the reigning Mughal rulers struggled to restore peace and order across the vast empire. After centuries of Mughal rule, the Indian Muslims now felt threatened by the Hindus from within India, 
and the European colonial powers from outside. As a multidisciplinary thinker, Shavuliola tackled these complex and overlapping social, political, economic, cultural and philosophical and religious issues in more than 40 books which he authored in both Arabic and Persian. Just as Sheikh Ahmad al-Sirhindi claimed to be the Mujaddid, religious regenerator of his age, so Shawulullah considered himself to be the Mujaddid of the 18th century. After returning from his trip to Arabia, his main priority was to return to the original scriptural sources of Islam and analyse them in the context of 18th century Mughal India. He approached his task with great determination and resolve, writing prolifically on a wide range of Islamic disciplines, and in so doing provided Islamic answers to some of the most burning issues of his time. Some of his well-known books include Tafhimat Al-Iliya, The Divine Explanation, Limahat Flashes, Sata'at, Illumination, Shifa Al-Qalub, Curing the Heart, Badur al-Baziga, Full Rising Moons, Izala al-Khafa al-Khilafa al-Khulafa, Removal of Ambiguity about the Early Caliphs, and Hujat Allah al-Baliga, God's Conclusive Argument. In these and many other books, he presented a systematic analysis of historical, philosophical, theological and mystical thought and thereby hope to harmonize the different strands of Islamic thought to create a unified world view. Thus, for instance, he systematically examined Sheikh Ahmad Sirhindi's mystical concept of Wadat al-Shuhud, unity of being and perception, or unity of witnesses. Vis-a-vis, Ibn al-Arabi's doctrine Wadat al-Wajud, unity of being, or monoism. And in so doing, he showed how Behind the form of language, there exists a neutral ground where the seemingly conflicting theories of mystical experiences actually converge. Indeed, he argued that there exists a common thread across all branches of knowledge which unified the core structures of human thought, even if the scholars of the past either failed to notice this generic truth or completely overlooked it in their quest for the specifics, as opposed to the full picture. This innovative approach to Islamic thought enabled Shavuliullah to reconcile some of the most complex and controversial theories which prevailed within Islamic philosophical, theological and mystical circles at the time. In addition to philosophy, theology and mysticism, he conducted extensive research in Islamic jurisprudence, history, political affairs, cultural development, social morality and ethics. His Izalat al-Khaffa al-Khilafa al-Khulafa is a refreshing study on early Islamic social, political, cultural history. Likewise, his commentaries on the Muatta of Imam Malik ibn Anas in both Arabic and Persian provided a detailed exposition of Islamic religious beliefs, morals and ethical teachings. While his treaties on his Quranic sciences are today considered to be some of the best works ever composed by an Indian Muslim in the field of Quranic thought and scholarship. Shavuliullah was convinced that Islam provided a comprehensive modus vivendi, which integrated all aspects of human life, including the spiritual, psychological and biological nature of human relationships, without overlooking the political, economic, cultural and aesthetic dimensions. The integrated concept of life, envisaged by Islam, had not only become completely eroded, in Muslim India, both in theory and in practice, but to Shawulullah, Indian Muslims had lost touch with the original pristine source of Islam. That is why he translated the Quran into Persian, despite the opposition of the conservative ulama, religious scholars, so as to make the Quran more accessible to the masses. In addition to this, in his Hujat Allah al Baligha, which is perhaps his most famous book, He developed a holistic and integrated view of life for the benefit of Indian Muslims. He emphasized the role and importance of ishtihad, exercising of individual judgment in Islamic jurisprudence, and argued that through the exercise of ishtihad, the timeless teaching of Islam, as preserved in the Quran and the authentic Hadith, could be applied in all times and conditions. 
is an indomitable champion of Islamic learning and education. Shaulullah supported the view that the Quran should be translated into other languages. Thus, his pioneering Persian translation of the Quran later inspired his talented son, Shah Rafi al Din, to produce an Urdu translation for the first time in the history of India. This way, he and his son had made Quran accessible to millions upon millions of people throughout the subcontinent, Muslims and non Muslims alike. At the time when Indian Muslims became surrounded by nothing but a doom and gloom, Shaulullah's refreshing and enlightening book lifted their hearts and spirits. His reformist ideas and encyclopedic knowledge of Islam, coupled with his analytical approach to Islamic principles and practices, influenced generations of prominent Islamic scholars, thinkers and reformers across the subcontinent and elsewhere, including Muhammad Murtada al-Zabidi, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, Sayyid Ahmad Brailvi, Shah Ismail Shahid, Sir Muhammad Iqbal, Muhammad Ibn al-Ghazali, Ubaidullah Sindhi, Abu Kalam Azad, Abu Ala al-Maududi, Abu Hassan al-Nadwi, and Abdul Ali Hamid Azari. Also, for a long time, his famous Hujat al-Baligha, was used as a standard textbook at al Azhar University, one of the Muslim world's most famous seats of Islamic learning and scholarship. Shaulullah died at the age of 59 and was buried in Meruli, a suburb of Delhi in India. <laughs>